Grammys. I haven't done that. Hi, I'm Beth, and today we're going to make rice packs. I have always used the anti-pill fleece. I just have not even bothered with the regular fleece. It pills up too fast, and I've not wanted my stuff to look that way. So I wanted to show you what can happen to your cutting mat when you cut uh, fleece on it. This is an old mat that's actually designated for this now. You can kind of get this out, but if you have a really nice brand new mat, you might want to go ahead and cut your fleece for this and other projects if you can with scissors. You can still lay it out on here and flatten it out to see what size you want and then cut. I'm going to go ahead and cut this 11 and a half inches. We'll make two out of a 60 inch wide piece of fleece like this. I recommend that if you make these as gifts, that you take the time to just make a little card with instructions. And I'll tell you what they are. I always say for people to put it on a clean plate or in a bowl, and that every microwave is different, and so they're gonna wanna test it the first time by doing a minute and then add 30 seconds and then add 30 seconds three minutes is average and then add those times up and then always do it the same and then they won't be disappointed because if they burn their rice it's just like burning popcorn they're never gonna like it again okay so we're gonna search down the long side of this with the right sides together about five-eighths of an inch should do a good job. When we turn it and put our hand inside, I have pretty big hands for a woman. I'm used to it being fairly snug, but I can easily move my hand around inside there. After I search this, I'm going to go ahead and uh, search the end. I have a little bit of extra selvagey stuff on one end, and I'm going to turn that in later, so I'm going to do the other clean end and just do very narrow amount that I cut off so that it's as big as possible, and then I'm going to turn it. Okay, I'm going to do my best to get this kind of flattened out. What I like to do is sort of fold this in thirds. and then use that <clears throat> to judge where I want to sew that. That serge seam has some nice stretch to it, and that's what you need because this is stretchy. So we're going to zigzag this, and I'm going to set mine about three for my zigzag width, and I'm going to start a good two inches from the end here. I'm using black thread. I think that's going to look nice because I have this black outlining on these puzzle pieces. And if I stitch here and then here, I'm going to end up with three channels. I'm going to back stitch and I'm going to do that quite a bit actually because I really want this secure. And 
then I'm just going to sew it. I'm going to stop about an inch or so from the end and back stitch. And then I'm going to take this up. And I'm going to make sure it's free, but I'm not going to cut my threads, and I'm going to sit down right here, and I'm going to do the same thing. In the beginning, I was filling these just using um, the cone from Cone Thread, and it took forever, and it was sort of messy, and then I talked to my husband about it, and he came back with this. and. Uh, it's just a milk jug taped to the cone with electrical tape and I've been using this for years now. We've had to retape it a few times. It's been taped with electrical tape, it's been taped with duct tape, and uh, it works pretty well. Don't tell anybody. This will really make it faster to make these kinds of things. I usually work on the lid. I like to do the middle channel first and I just shake that in there. These are such a comforting thing. I've had people tell me that they're addicted to their rice pack or bed buddy or whatever type they have. Lots of people like them with flax. Some people use wheat berries. I've always done rice because it's very similar to the rice trivet that I do and will continue to do uh, to go with some of the kitchen items. Uh, these are just universally loved by people and even if it's a sock you know it's just the rice is so comforting now we don't want this too tight if they're too stiff they're really not that nice to use but you don't want it too loose either and so about what we're going for is for them to be about full up to oh about an inch away from the end of the stitching I'm pretty good on two of these channels I'm a little bit low on one. And you get pretty fast at these if you're doing it a lot. So we get our rice in there. And then once that's like that, we're just going to turn these ends in like this. And we're going to pin it. about three pins and then we're going to stitch it with our guide set at about a quarter inch about the width of your foot whatever your foot is it'll probably probably be a little more than a quarter but we'll just stitch across here to close that up and then we're going to have a nice rice pack this end doesn't really need to stretch it doesn't really stretch, so we're just going to do a straight stitch. Make sure that there's no rice in here because it'll really uh, make your foot stick in one place and make it hard for you to move. And also be careful that you're not allowing rice into your machine. I've gotten a little rice in my machine and I've never had anything really bad happen, but I sure wouldn't want you to find out that something really bad could happen. Go ahead and backstitch both ends really well. It's a cold fall day today in Montana and my fingers are a little bit uh, not as responsive as they usually are. I'm a little bit clumsy fingered today. Okay, so if I do this, I'm going to zoom out. If I do this and shake it down into that end that I just sewed, I have a nice rice pack. And this one is pretty stiff right now. You know, they loosen up with time, and so you do want them to start out a little bit stiff, and you just have to judge what you think people will like. What you don't want is when you hold it here for all the rice to go way down the sides to where 
you know, when someone puts it on the back of their neck, they really don't have anything there to keep them warm. This can also be a cold pack. And then you just put it in the freezer. It fits in a Ziploc, in a quart, I mean gallon Ziploc bag pretty easily. And they can keep it in there. And then when they use it as an ice pack, it's not that cold, uh, that, that super cold, harsh cold that you get from uh, one of those gel packs. This is a, a less intense, more even cold where you can use this without having to put any kind of a cloth between you and the ice pack. I hope you think this is a cute design and that it's worth making and thanks.